Right, here's our mechanism plate and shutter blades. And the blades, as you can see, are stuck together. Very reluctant to come apart. I don't know why the shutter didn't work. They're hard to pull apart even using tweezers. So those blades are not only sticky with oil, they're quite stained looking and um, that's a very fine surface corrosion on there and they'll polish away with some brasso. The mechanism plate, it doesn't look particularly oily which is it's good. So three screws here. There are three screws, they all look much the same. One is slightly longer than the other and that holds that bracket. The bracket holds the main drive spring. If you mix the screws up, you'll end up with a shorter screw where the bracket is, which means that if you over enthusiastic tightening it you'll end up stripping it out because it won't extend all the way through the mechanism plate and if you end up with a long screw where the short screws should be it will stick through the mechanism plate do up nicely but jam the shutter when you go to operate it as the blades hook behind it okay so I'll clean up these the mechanism plate components and then I can get onto the shutter blades, I suppose. So I'll start with the plate itself. So, with naphtha on a cotton bud, I'm just going to swab the mechanism plate to remove any oil or dirt. The cotton bud is coming off quite cleanly here, which is a good sign, of course. And I'll clean the top surface. This shutter has been probably over enthusiastically lubricated with graphite grease. It's all over these levers. Um, of course most of the surfaces on those levers are not active working surfaces that contact anything else and couldn't possibly benefit from being buttered with graphite grease to that extent. Be careful with this spring here, this is the detent spring. It uh, usually stays in place while you're cleaning the mechanism plate. Be careful if you do dislodge it that it doesn't fly off into the distance somewhere and get lost. The little brass piece here is the pallet for the flash sync timing. That needs to be able to swing backwards and forwards freely. Usually that's not a problem. It's not a, uh, a critical function usually works fine as it is. That's good. Now the lens tube, that'll have dirt and grease around the outside where the uh, main ring and that runs on it and all of that needs to be cleaned, particularly the inside surface. And at the back where the blade actuating ring runs around that area there, around the outside diameter there. Get rid of any old grease and dirt from there. Sometimes these are quite shiny when they're clean and other times they're quite dull. It depends on the degree of uh, surface oxidation of the metal. It's uh, of no consequence if it's a bit dull that won't adversely affect anything. You don't need to be attacking that with polish. And here's the blade actuating ring. This has been lubricated with graphite grease. Uh, it's been 
very lightly lubricated I would say again I'm just cleaning this to remove all traces of the old grease and one of the main reasons you remove old grease is that it will have accumulated dust and dirt over time well those are those components basically cleaned and I can reassemble those pieces now well the first thing here to add back is the blade actuating ring need to swing that under that detent spring make sure that's all out of the way that this drops into position that's good and the detent spring needs to hook behind that stud on the blade actuating ring And this is held in place with the lens tube which only fits in in one position one of these legs has got the edge chewed off where it runs up against that post on that post is positioned the bracket that holds the main drive spring we've got three screws which are pretty much the same except one is longer than the others by some, uh, I don't know, half a millimetre, a millimetre, somewhere between the two. The longer screw goes in this position. Just run that lightly down in place. Likewise, it's two friends. When you're putting the lens tube on, make sure it's not sitting on top of the pallet, it's not sitting on top of one of the levers that swing in and out, and you should be good to go. Just check that that blade actuating ring moves. It does, so nothing's trapped underneath. You can do up those three screws. that's our blade actuating ring back together I'm going to lubricate that with a bit of graphite powder next here I've got some graphite powder this stuff you can probably find at the, uh, the hardware store it's just fine graphite powder used for lubricating locks and various other things I'll just drop a bit in on the top of the blade actuating ring there and then work that blade actuating ring backwards and forwards to distribute that graphite powder it'll find its way into the working surfaces it doesn't take much then I'll just shake it off into the container and I can take it directly from the container with tweezers to do the same job at another time so that's my mechanism plate lubricated I'm quite happy with that got to blow out all the excess any excess powder at all from this uh, before I assemble the shutter because as I mentioned earlier you do not want particles of graphite powder appearing on the inside of your lens surfaces at a later date because they look interesting and sparkly and they will certainly degrade image quality if there's enough of them there to create a problem with flare well these shutter blades are all fairly marked it's um, oil marking on there, oil stains and the like but mostly that's surface corrosion that I can see there so I'm just going to polish them with a bit of Brasso so first I just do one face and then the other Now this is just a, uh, a piece of board with an old t-shirt stretched over it and as you can tell from the surface it's been used a million times before for exactly this purpose I'm 
I'm just using the end of a cotton bud to hold the blade in place while I polish it. Because I want to get both ends of the blade of course. And usually it doesn't take a hell of a lot of effort to uh, get these blades polished clean. So I'll flip them all over now, do the other side. And this will polish off all that light surface corrosion that I saw on those blades and that surface corrosion has the appearance of uh, fine webbing. It's um, the same sort of pattern you would see with uh, fungus on lenses sometimes. It's like a fine webbing or a veil, often not extending over the whole surface. But it's just corrosion of the uh, surface. And this will also polish off any marks, of any stains on there that have resulted from oil being on the blades. Sometimes you get staining from that. This sort of thing is easy to do with shutter blades and uh, there's fairly minimal risk of damage. Diaphragm blades, because they have rivets on them that form the pivots, they are vulnerable to damage if you try and do something like this. I rarely do anything with diaphragm blades of this nature. If they do have to be polished because they have quite a bit of corrosion on them and, they are, and I need them to run very smoothly um, as in a uh, retina reflex. The original retina reflex of course has diaphragm blades in the shutter and they need to snap down to the preset aperture when you fire the shutter and uh, so in order to do that they need to be very smooth in operation. All right. So, let's see if I can polish that surface now. And I'm just checking that surface and it's, if I can get it in the light for you, yeah. That's nice and clean, absolutely no sign of any uh, problem there. That's good. I'll pop that to one side. All of these blades now, having been polished with Brasso, need to be cleaned with naphtha to remove all traces of the polish. And I strongly suspect that the polish, that blade just took off into the distance. Let me see, it's over there. I strongly suspect that the Brasso leaves a uh, protective wax or similar surface on the metal and of course I don't want anything on the metal I want them just nice and clean I can see the state of these blades quite clearly here as you can't because I've got the uh, light from the window coming in from this side. 
by looking across the blade I can judge quite clearly how clean it is whether it shows any signs of residual marks or corrosion or anything like that last one Certainly polishing shutter blades like this is not something that I would need to do for every shutter that comes my way. Uh, generally speaking it's simply enough to clean the shutter blades. But if there's any sign of corrosion, um, this camera in particular it showed considerable sign of having been stored somewhere damp. It tends to show up on the shutter blades. And then that can be a major nuisance and then they certainly have to be polished right there's my blades back again and I can clean them with a bit of naphtha on a cotton and cotton buds I'll just start with a manipulate the blades with a toothpick just swab both sides carefully taking care to make sure there's no residue from the metal polish on them particularly around the edges of the blades you can see the marks coming off there Alright, well all those blades look like new now so they can ready to go back onto the mechanism plate and then I can put the case on, close that up. Here's the mechanism plate that's been uh, lubricated with a bit of graphite powder. I get the, the blade actuating ring into the blade open position. I can start assembling the blades to it. And here is the start position. Here we go. And the shutter case can be lowered into position. It only fits in in one place. Why is that reluctant to go on? No particular reason. That's better line all that up and there should be three screws to hold that case together countersunk head screws run the screws up lightly Don't tighten the screws immediately because if one of the blades had become dislodged while you're putting the case over it, you don't want it getting trapped. Just checking the action. 
it opens and closes smoothly that's good do up my three screws tightly and that is the blades all back in the case and I can start assembling the other components all right to start with the springs start with this one drop that into position I'm holding a toothpick over the top so it can't fly off into the distance and swing the end over and behind the post it has to catch on on that other lever check that that's seated correctly check that both levers are sprung loaded that's good that went okay these springs are all quite fine and as is the nature of springs they would rather be somewhere else this one positioned on its post there's a groove in the post that it sits in swing it back Check that it's sitting correctly, that's good. Now that spring will hold our B lever in position. So I want to hold this lever out, move my shutter into the open position. Let's get a more substantial pair of tweezers to hold the B lever. Got to hook that onto its spring. Of course, it's not uh, not cooperating, as they say. No, it didn't want to fall into place. I'll retrieve that end of the spring shortly. The B lever is retained in position with a screw with another spring on it this spring needs to be positioned carefully so I'll just get that screw started I won't do it up tight I've got to retrieve the end of the spring under the B lever and hook that into position like that do that screw up check that that spring's going to stay in position looks like it is I hold back the B lever is that free yes I hold that back I can move the blade actuating ring back to the rest position that's good and this spring needs to be swung over the top of the screw and comes back against the lens tube here and it comes against bears against this lever here I'll check that, that fixing screw is tight that's good so far so good a few other components to go on now that's the aperture setting lever the flash sync self timer setting lever its spacer and its three screws and they all need to be cleaned before I can put them on there so that's just um, wiping with some solvent and a cotton bud I'll do that I'll be back shortly so a little bit of molybdenum paste wipe some on that little spring there that and some on here on those little sort of ratchet uh, notches if you like on that piece this can drop into place the pin needs to hook behind the spring here 
check that's free, that's good. This shim goes on and he goes in one position, it's got a locator, a little tab on it that locates it. And the aperture setting lever here drops over that post on the back of the uh, ring for the aperture setting and is held in place with three screws. That's good. Tighten those three screws up. Check the action. That's nice and smooth. That moves freely. That's good. The aperture setting on a Retina 3C type camera, there's no click stops to the aperture itself this clips to the shutter speed setting so once you set the shutter speed um, the EV value the shutter speed and aperture values are set together and as you move one the other moves in concert so if this is tight either because it's mechanically buggered up at the back or because the blades are oily you will shift the shutter speed you may find that the aperture setting doesn't follow it automatically and you could end up with a, an exposure problem so it needs to move freely that's fine so that's good and now i need to start assembling the other components to the mechanism plate okay let's start putting things back in the shutter this is the pallet wheel just check that revolves smoothly as it and it does it's the sector gear that operates the pallet wheel and I'm just applying a bit of molybdenum paste to that tail end there because that's where it catches put that in position swing that inwards and get its return spring in place hook that over its post and stretch it out and hook it into that lever and check that that works, that latches back in position when I release the shutter it releases that's good, so that part's fine now I can continue putting that flash sink and latch mechanism in place right, let's get this first component of the flash lever in place that goes over that post I've got to get it spring hooked in against the case it tucks down under this leaf spring that's sitting correctly the moving flash contact sits on top of that piece it's sitting correctly there now the latch plate sits on top of that lot so I'll cock this by swinging that arm across until it latches put this plate in position that's correct small plain screw at this end a spring which goes here and a shouldered screw 
that holds that spring and the plate in place at this end here. And that screw down, being careful that the spring fits neatly around the screw and isn't trapped underneath it. Check that the spring revolves smoothly, it does. Tighten that screw up. And the end of that spring I need to hook behind the lever here, so I'll hold the lever forward with a toothpick, lift the spring up over the back of it, and drop it into the notch at the back. So that lever is now sprung loaded, and that lever's job is to latch the main cam in position, in the cocked position when you cock the shutter and that in turn when it releases the main cam allows the shutter to fire so you'll want the main cam and its spring and we want the shutter release lever 